It's been more than 20 years since this hilarious sports comedy came out. Even though critics of its day didn't love it, The Replacements has been a movie classic for many. Here's what members of the cast have been up to in the time since. Beloved veteran actor Keanu Reeves brought the world's most talented barnacle scraper, quarterback Shane Falco, to life in The Replacements. After his turn as the downtrodden former QB, Keanu Reeves promptly disappeared and was never heard from again. Oh, wait, that didn't happen. In reality, Reeves has spent the two decades since The Replacements came out becoming one of the biggest movie stars in modern cinema and starring in more blockbusters than we can count. The year after The Replacements, he starred as lovable loser Connor O'Neill in the heartstring-tugging Hardball. In 2003, he reprised his role as Neo for not one but two sequels to The Matrix before playing the title character in 2005's Constantine. He played undercover cop Bob Arctor in 2006's drug-fueled, dystopian, rotoscoped Philip K. Dick adaptation A Scanner Darkly. Two years later, took on the role of Klaatu in the remake of The Day the Earth Stood Still. Reeves made his directorial debut in 2013 with Man of Tai Chi, in which he also played Donaka Mark. A year later, he launched the massively successful series of John Wick movies, starring as the titular assassin in three films so far. John Wick Chapter 4 is, at the time of this video's release, currently filming. Actor Gene Hackman took on the role of demanding but understanding head coach of the Washington Sentinels, Jimmy McGinty, or as Shane Falco called him, that old coach from the 80s. A year after the replacement, Hackman appeared in the crime rom-com Heartbreakers alongside Sigourney Weaver, Jennifer Love Hewitt, and Ray Liotta. He played William, the unwitting mark of a marriage con. In 2001, he starred as Royal, the father of the eccentric titular family in Wes Anderson's quirky comedy The Royal Tenenbaums, co-starring Ben Stiller, Gwyneth Paltrow, Owen Wilson, and Luke Wilson. That same year, Hackman teamed with Owen Wilson again for the war thriller Behind Enemy Lines, playing Navy Admiral Leslie Rygart. He was the commanding officer of the USS Carl Vinson, whose fighter pilot was shot down on a routine reconnaissance mission. In 2003, he starred alongside Dustin Hoffman, Rachel Weisz, and John Cusack in the legal drama Runaway Jury, adapting a John Grisham novel. In his final film role before retiring, Hackman starred in the 2004 political comedy Welcome to Mooseport with Ray Romano. He played former United States President Monroe Eagle Cole, who gets drawn into an increasingly silly campaign to become mayor of a small town in Maine. Head cheerleader Annabelle Farrell was brought to life by actor Brooke Langton. Not only is she an amazing on-field performer, she's a huge football fan. Even if Shane's entire team turned against him, he would always have one true believer on the sidelines. Two years after appearing in The Replacements, Langton showed up in many guest roles on popular TV shows like Weeds in 2005 and Monk in 2006. Langton reunited with The Replacements co-star Orlando Jones for the B-horror movie Primeval in 2007, playing a journalist who travels to Burundi to try to capture a giant man-eating crocodile. Later that year, she joined the main cast of NBC's crime drama, Life, playing the role of Constance Griffiths. She's the attorney who proved the innocence of the wrongly convicted lead character detective Charlie Cruz, played by Damian Lewis. In the years since, Langton has appeared in a few other popular series and films, like The Debt in 2015. In 2018, she took on the recurring role of Lieutenant Maddie Rawlings on TNT's action drama series The Last Ship for five episodes, working alongside the rest of the crew of the USS Nathan James to try to find a cure for the pandemic that ravages the planet. Actor Orlando Jones was a perfect choice for the role of less-than-sure-handed wide receiver Clifford Franklin. He might have had some serious wheels and major breakaway speed, but he sure didn't have the mitts and dexterity required to haul in a pass with any consistency. Jones kept plenty busy following his turn as Franklin. A few months after The Replacements was released, he took on multiple roles in the Faustian comedy remake of Bedazzled. There, Elizabeth Hurley plays the devil, enticing Brendan Fraser's hapless character to sell his soul. The next year, Jones played community college professor Harry Block in the underrated sci-fi comedy Evolution 
fighting an alien invasion. A year later, he appeared as the digital artificial intelligence librarian Box 114 in The Time Machine, a loose adaptation of the classic H.G. Wells novel of the same name. In 2003, Jones joined Gene Hackman as part of the cast of Runaway Jury. In addition to his work in feature films, Jones has enjoyed plenty of success on the small screen, including his turn as Captain Frank Irving on the supernatural procedural Sleepy Hollow. He also nabbed a recurring role as Mr. Nancy, aka the tricker god Anansi, on the popular Neil Gaiman series American Gods. Kicker Nigel Gruff, as played by actor Reese Ifans, isn't exactly what you'd call athletic, though it's clear his liver gets a regular workout. The former soccer striker is more what you'd call wiry. Three months after the release of The Replacements, Ifans appeared alongside another talented cast taking on the role of Adrian, one of the sons of Satan in Adam Sandler's Little Nicky. In 2001, he took on the role of Icky, a club owner who also deals in drugs and guns in The 51st State. The film starred Samuel L. Jackson as a revolutionary drug chemist and was alternately titled Formula 51. In 2010, Ifans had an iconic turn as Xenophilius Lovegood, publisher of The Quibbler and father to Luna Lovegood in Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 1. Two years later, he played Dr. Kirk Connors, mentor to Peter Parker, played by Andrew Garfield, and eventual reptilian villain in The Amazing Spider-Man. Ifans also enjoyed a recurring role as Mycroft Holmes, brother to Sherlock Holmes, played by Johnny Lee Miller, on the modern American crime procedural, Elementary. Actor Michael Jace portrayed defensive back Earl Wilkinson, who went to prison for allegedly beating up a cop. Naturally, he mixes well with Danny Bateman. As such, Wilkinson wears a tinted visor on his helmet and plays under the alias Ray Smith. This is so no one's aware that a convicted felon has been released by the governor to serve as a replacement player during the strike. Jace is perhaps best known as Julian Lowe, a uniformed police officer and member of the main cast of The Shield, FX's gritty crime drama. He appeared in all 88 of the series' episodes across its seven seasons, portraying a cop enduring the inner conflict of his homosexuality, brought about with his devout Christian faith. Lead character Vic Mackey is aware of Julian's sexual orientation and blackmails him to keep a secret. Jace's final credited role was recurring character Terrell on the crime drama Southland. In 2014, according to CNN, Jace was arrested and charged with homicide in the fatal shooting of his wife, April Jace, having reportedly dialed 911 himself. Michael Jace was convicted of second-degree murder in May 2016 for ABC7, which reported the jury deliberated for fewer than three hours before reaching a guilty verdict. A month later, Jace was sentenced to 40 years to life in prison. He is currently incarcerated in California State Prison and will be eligible for parole in 2039, according to the California Department of Corrections and Rehabilitation. If there's one thing for which quarterback Shane Falco can be grateful, it's that linebacker Danny Bateman, played by John Favreau, is on his team. This means that he's only on the receiving end of his crushing tackles when Bateman forgets that he's not supposed to hit players wearing red jerseys in practice. Opposing QBs had better look out, because he hits hard and fast, despite having only played college football as a walk-on. The year after The Replacements came out, Favreau wrote and directed his first feature film, Made, in which he also starred. He appeared alongside Vince Vaughn as a mediocre boxer who gets involved in low-level organized crime. Two years later, Favreau took on the role of Franklin Foggy Nelson in the much-maligned Ben Affleck-starring Marvel Comics movie Daredevil. Of course, in 2008, he helped launch the Marvel Cinematic Universe as Harold Happy Hogan, Tony Stark's driver, bodyguard, and best friend in Iron Man. Favreau appeared in all three Iron Man solo films, as well as directing the first two. In addition to helping to mentor Peter Parker, Tom Holland, in the MCU's two Spider-Man movies. Favreau has continued to direct and produce, helming the live-action remakes of Disney's The Jungle Book and The Lion King. If all of that wasn't enough, he is also the creator and serves as showrunner of The Mandalorian, 
the Star Wars streaming series on Disney+. According to coach Jimmy McGinty, tight end Brian Murphy, played by David Denman, would have been drafted in the first round if he hadn't been born deaf. Despite living with such a limitation, Brian manages to excel as a member of the replacement Washington Sentinels. Look at it this way. You'll never be called offsides on an audible. Denman's turn as Brian was his first appearance in a feature-length film. In 2001, he took on the role of Lance, the gay bartender at the fictional Alaskan ski resort of Bull Mountain in the snowboarding comedy Out Cold. Denman played bully Don Price, who beats up protagonist Edward Bloom in Tim Burton's 2003 fantasy film Big Fish. Denman's most recent film role came in 2020's Greenland, for which he took on the character Ralph Vento, who kidnaps John Garrity's son, Nathan. Denman has also enjoyed memorable small-screen roles, including appearing as Ed Brooks, the adulterous love interest of Julia Braverman Graham. That was on the NBC family dramedy series Parenthood. He also recently took on the role of Frank Sheehan, ex-husband to the title character in the acclaimed HBO limited series Mayor of Easttown. Ace Yonamine took on the larger-than-life role of Jumbo Fumiko, a member of the replacement Washington Sentinels offensive line. He is a former sumo wrestler, which makes him an expert at pushing people around. As coach Jimmy McGinty says, in the world of professional football, that translates to pass blocking. Fumiko is also the big hero of the bar fight, having sat on Wilson's head, and his kiai becomes a popular rallying cry among the team. Unfortunately, he commits a holding penalty when Shane Falco improbably runs the ball in for a touchdown on the field goal attempt, during which Nigel Gruff was nearly forced to blow the kick on purpose. Yonamine's role in The Replacements is an instance of art imitating life. Prior to his appearance in the movie, his feature film debut, the Hawaiian-born actor worked in Japan as a sumo wrestler, according to Hawaiian outlet Midweek. To date, Yonamine has only appeared in two additional films, according to IMDb. In 2003, he appeared in Laura Croft Tomb Raider, The Cradle of Life. He was an imposing member of the criminal organization Shea Ling, which was hired by Dr. Jonathan Reese to retrieve the map to the mystical object. In 2005, Yonamine appeared as a sumo wrestler in Memoirs of a Geisha. According to Midweek, he's continued acting by appearing in commercials and worked security at the courthouse in Pearl City, Oahu, Hawaii. Jamal Jackson, as played by actor Faison Love, is a bit of a hothead. He and his brother Andre are a formidable pair of guards that coach Jimmy McGinty recruits back into football after they retire and become actual bodyguards. After the bar fight that unites the team, the brothers realize it's their job to protect quarterback Shane Falco on and off the field. So when the striking players harass quarterback Shane Falco in the parking lot a second time, Jamal pulls a gun and shoots Eddie Martell's car multiple times. A year after appearing in The Replacements, Love showed up in various films, including Couples Retreat with co-star Jon Favreau, who also co-wrote the film. He took on the role of Shane, the recently divorced guy with a wild 20-something girlfriend. In 2003, he appeared in the charming Will Ferrell Christmas comedy Elf, also directed by Favreau, as Wanda. He's the manager of the Gimbel's department store who sends Buddy, played by Ferrell, into a frenzy by announcing that Santa Claus would be coming. In addition to finding steady work as a character actor in films, Love also appeared in nine episodes of Kevin Hart's BET reality TV parody, Real Husbands of Hollywood. He played a fictionalized version of himself in the show's first, fifth, and sixth seasons. In 2018, Love joined the cast of Step Up High Water, a drama series based on the popular Step Up movies, as Al Baker. Love appeared in the first two seasons that aired on YouTube Red. Step Up was picked up for a third season by premium cable network stars. Actor Michael Talaferro took on the role of Andre Jackson, the larger brother to Jamal, who is a bit more level-headed, though just as protective of Shane Falco once the team comes together. In that memorable parking lot scene, Andre reveals that he's pretty fond of the smell of that wild yam that Annabelle Farrell gave Shane to soothe his sore muscles. What's that smell? Wild yam. Mm, that's nice. Following the replacements, Talaferro's next film appearance came in the independent crime drama 
Blue Hill Avenue. He took on the role of Simon, an adrenaline-fueled criminal who, with his three friends, is one of the biggest drug dealers in Boston. In 2002, Telefero appeared as inmate Little Joe in the crime thriller Half Past Dead, helping Steven Seagal's FBI agent character rescue a kidnapped Supreme Court justice on Alcatraz. For 2004's dance film You Got Served, he played Emerald. He was the drug lord for whom lead characters Elgin and David work in order to pay for the Little Saints to enter their street dancing battles. Talaferro's final film role came as Brian Smith in the crime musical A Day in the Life, a film that was released in 2009, a little more than three years after his death in 2006. As the Tampa Bay Times reported, he died on May 4th at the age of 44 after suffering a stroke near his home in Los Angeles, California. Troy Winbush brought to life pious running back Walter Cochran. Cochran is one of the replacement Washington Sentinels with some actual experience playing professional football, though not much. He played one game in the pros and blew out his knee, pretty much ending his career, or so he thought. When given a second chance at playing football, he just wants to score one touchdown. Thankfully, he manages to do just that, though he blows out his knee again in the process. Cochran notably makes Shane Falco promise to finish what he started. We assume he's telling him to win the game. One of Wimbush's next feature film roles came in the 2002 thriller John Q, in which he appeared as expectant father Steve Smith. He is one of the character John Archibald's hostages. Denzel Washington's role is of a desperate father who seeks to get his son on the recipient list for a heart transplant. In the years since, Winbush has found consistent work as an actor, taking on guest roles in various popular TV series. He's appeared in shows ranging from police procedurals like NCIS to dramas like Saving Grace. He's also had a recurring role as Officer Pachinski on the popular sitcom The Goldbergs. Winbush recently appeared in season one of The Wilds, the streaming drama from Amazon Studios, as FBI agent Dean Young. Ugh. Eddie Martell, played by Brett Cullen. Where do you even start with this guy? He's a prima donna, ending the final game before the players strike with a giveaway slide instead of going for the win. Martell's also an unrepentant jerk who has his fellow striking players flip Shane Falco's already beat up truck in the parking lot. In reality, we hope Cullen is a decent person and we've got no reason to believe otherwise, though he's played some other sketchy characters in the years since. Starting in 2005, he took on the recurring role of Goodwin Stanhope, one of the others sent to infiltrate the group of surviving passengers of Oceanic Flight 815 on Lost. Cullen also appeared as the creepy, adulterous congressman in 2012's The Dark Knight Rises, though that wouldn't be his last role in a DC Comics Batman film. Having seemingly perfected playing an entitled jerk, he took on the role of Thomas Wayne, the father of the future Cape Crusader Bruce Wayne, who's also maybe, maybe not the father of Arthur Fleck, played by Joaquin Phoenix. He is, of course, the Joker in the 2019 film Joker. Cullen also had a recurring role on The Blacklist beginning in the finale episode of season six. He also appeared in season three of True Detective as the eventual Arkansas Attorney General, Gerald Kent. Veteran actor Jack Warden brought Washington Sentinel's owner Edward O'Neill to life. He's an old-school kind of guy, and he hilariously yells at Eddie Martell from his luxury box. He declares the cocky quarterback to be a wimp after his give-up slide at the end of the final pre-strike game, though he uses a different word altogether when courting Jimmy McGinty to be his new head coach. In said negotiations, he promises to give Coach McGinty full control of the team. Spoiler alert! He breaks that promise. After Martell tells McGenty that O'Neill will fire him when Shane Falco shows up during halftime of the final game, the furious coach yells something that elaborates on the troubled history between the two. It won't be the first time! The replacements marked Warden's final film appearance as he retired from acting, citing concerns of declining health. He turned 80 the year the film came out. As the BBC reported in 2006, Warden died at age 85 after weeks of poor health. His manager had told the outlet that Warden had suffered from heart and kidney problems prior to his death. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite movies are coming soon.
Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.